The trouble with old steam locomotives. Part 21, fitting an extra live steam injector water feed. Why am I doing that? Well, because the customer asked me to do it. On the other locomotive I'm repairing for this customer, which is an LBSC Speedy, the injector is fed from an external source. And this is a common thing to do on small tank engines, because the problem is, as the water in the tank gets hot, because it's right next to the boiler, the water temperature becomes too high to operate the injector. This type of injector requires cold water to work. So the obvious answer is feed the injector from an external source. Unlike the Speedy which just has an external source, I'm going to make it so you can have a choice of either the water from the tank before it gets hot, or the external water source. I've rebent the water pipe that goes to the valve that connects to the tank into a different position. And here I'm just checking that the existing injector water valve on the locomotive still works. And as you can see, it does. I'm going to do the same job a different way to the Speedy, by fitting a T-piece. Here's the T-piece, 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. This is the original water pipe from the tap. What I need to do is make a link pipe that fits between the injector and the T-piece, and a longer pipe, like on the Speedy. Here's a shot of the water feed pipe arrangement on the Speedy, and it has this crudely made fitting on the end, one assumes a pipe pushes on there. In this clip I'm bending a piece of 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter pipe to the correct shape to fit between the T-piece and the injector's water inlet. I cannot use a straight pipe to go from the T-piece to the injector because if I did that, the overflow would be directly above the water pipe and the output from the overflow is hot water, which would be very likely to heat up the incoming water and that would be no good. In the outer part of the workshop, I'm silver soldering the coned unions onto the end of the pipe. And as always, for some reason, when I make videos, I use too much silver solder. I must try harder. After the silver soldering process, I quenched the part in some water and then polished it up on the polishing spindle. When I fitted the pipe, I realised that I had overlooked something. The union nut didn't go very far on the threads of the water inlet on the injector itself. I used a coned union on this connection because it was also a coned union on the original pipe. If you look at the injector, you will see that the water inlet, like all the rest, is a flat surface. I copied the original piping, which was a mistake. Not a big problem, though. Using my one-inch belt sander, I flattened off the end. And now, when I fit the pipe to the injector, the union nut goes all the way up. This is the pipe arrangement so far. One more to make. Now it's over to the lathe, and I've adjusted the angle of the compound slide so it turns a taper on this piece of phosphor bronze in the chuck. I've taken the measurements from the one on the speedy, and the tapered part is three quarters of an inch long, then there's a parallel part. How do I know what the taper angle is? Well, that's a difficult one, really. I looked at the one on the speedy and thought, hmm, yes, right, I've memorised that. Then I wandered over to the lathe and did some test cuts on the end of the bar. And after a couple of attempts at the angle, I got it the same as the one on the speedy locomotive. A few weeks back, I got a really strange message from a viewer. Nothing new there, as I get a lot of strange messages from some viewers. He wrote, I wish you'd stop calling these locomotives. They're called engines, not locomotives. It's difficult to tell the age of a viewer from a message. It could be a child who's been watching too much Thomas the Tank Engine, or even an adult who's been watching too much Thomas the Tank Engine. I've watched my share in my time. But I'm not the fat controller, and they are called locomotives. After I finished cutting the taper on the end of the part, I returned the compound slide back to zero. And then I centre drilled the end of it. Nothing new here. After the centre drill, I changed it for a twist drill and drilled all the way down as far as the part had machined. And then I parted it off and it fell into the chip tray. I think this is quite a good copy of the one on the Speedy. It should be near enough for rock and roll anyway, it's the same size. By the way, I forgot to show it, but I drilled the other end of this fitting with a quarter inch hole. I drilled out a union nut part of the way through, so this pipe actually wedged into the union nut. Now I can silver solder the union nut directly to the pipe. And here comes the other side. And you will notice that I'm waiting until the flux takes on a watery appearance before touching the joint with the silver solder. If you touch the silver solder stick on the work too early, it will just blob all around the joint. But if you put it on at the right time, it flashes around the joint by capillary action. 
It's very important not to put this straight away into the water to cool it. Let it cool to black, then drop it in a pot of water. The thermal shock of quenching it removes some of the oxidisation. After cleaning up the part on the polishing spindle, it's back to the engine. Because the union nut is soldered directly to the quarter-inch pipe, there isn't a union cone to seal it onto the T-piece. This is not a high-pressure connection, but it mustn't let air in either. Here's a finished job, I'd better check it against the speedy. Not only is the taper of the cone correct, the distance that the pipe sticks out from the buffer beam is the same as on the speedy. It only looks a bit smaller because the engine is bigger. And as a past girlfriend once said to me, for a very big thing that's a very small dangly bit. But thankfully history proved her wrong and it was big enough to fill a pram three times. Unless the owner moves the goalpost and asks me to fit anything else to this engine, that's it for this series. All I've got to say is stay well, stay safe, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.